Today we're going to be looking at the Elegoo Mars Resin 3D Printer. I reached out to Elegoo and said, hey, I want to know if this is good for custom dice making. And I've heard that resin is the way to go. And they said, you know what, we'll send you a free one if you want. So, of course I said, yippee ki let's do this. Now, I got their Elegoo Mars ones for free, and this is a review of the product. But, I want to still try and give my honest opinion of it, because I think it has bonuses that others do or do not have compared to regular 3D printing. I think the quality is great, and I want to talk about it. So, first, let's get into what you can create and why use a resin 3D printer instead of something like an FDM. Resin 3D printers are just capable of getting better detail, pretty much, period. An FDM printer is something like you think of of when you think of a 3D printer. It builds it up layer by layer by squirting out material. A resin 3D printer like this uses UV lasers on UV curing resin to build up your materials. And we'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to show you how easy it is to set up the Elegoo Mars. And no, they did not tell me to tell you how easy it is. It came in the box like this. All you had to do was turn on the screen, make sure it works, and then I played around with this little arm to get familiar with it. Right here is the resin reservoir where you're supposed to put the resin inside, and it's got a clear bottom because the LCD screen on the bottom is where the UV is going to come into contact with the UV curing resin and solidify into your printed part. So I take these little screws, loosen them up so that this thing can become all loosey-goosey, and I go to the homing button so that it goes all the way down to the bottom. Now this is not how Elegoo says to set it up. I found this method online, and it seems to work really, really well. I tried it first time and got perfect prints first time and every time since then. After you home it down, go ahead and line it up so that it's straight and good to go. From there, tighten the screws, and your printer is really set and good to go. There's nothing else that I had to do to it. The arm is secured in, it's locked in, everything pretty much came like this. There's not much else that goes into this. They send you a flash drive that not only has software in there for you to be able to put your own STL files, but it comes with its own STL files for you to try printing. So I plug it into the back and you can go right to the screen and start printing if you'd like. Now I added some of my others because I was playing around with the software, but I wanted to test out their specific prints first because they are test prints. They are supposed to be hard to print. If you can print those, you're doing pretty good. So I'm going to start by printing their rooks, but first I want to show you the resin that they sent with this to go inside. This is their photopolymer yellow resin. There are other resins that will work with this, but this stuff and all UV curing resin like this is nasty. You need to follow resin safety with this. Wear your gloves, wear your respirator that's rated for fumes, because man, this stuff can get you. If you get this on your skin, you really do need to wash it out. So pour this Velveeta cheese looking stuff down inside your resin and you can get started. So I'm hitting print. I'm going to put the lid on it because man, it smells. If you thought you could just put this in your bedroom and let it run, I'm gonna say that you're wrong. You need some ventilation in your room or else whew, you're gonna get kicked out. There is no sleeping in the same room with this. It's not all that loud, but it's, it is stinky, and that's just the nature of UV curing resin. So the way resin 3D printers work is it takes that build plate and puts it extremely close but not touching that bottom LCD screen. See those two circles on the screen there? That is UV LCD light coming up through the screen and making one small layer of those circles and prints on it, goes back down and prints on another layer. I'll show this in a four hour time lapse here because why not? That looks gorgeous even though you can see me doing stuff in the background. As you can see how this print works, it takes one extremely thin layer and builds on top of another from the bottom up until you have your final product of these two printable rooks, which again, these are just the test files. You can really print anything you want in here. Now they are coated in that uncured resin, so we really need to do something about that because they are not usable in the current state. They're still a little bit soft. We need to cure them up. Now the way we do that is we take 99% isopropyl alcohol and swish them around in it. I'm using an ultrasonic cleaner because I'm extra like that and decided to because I know that I wanted to get really serious with that by taking all my resin stuff and putting them in there rather than just a little bath. They give you this little scraper and you can take these off and make sure you don't get any of that resin anywhere and scrape them right off the side. That build plate is metal, you're not going to hurt it with that plastic scraper. I take my ultrasonic cleaner, let them run for a while, it essentially prevents me from having to swish them around for five minutes, and it 
gets all that uncured resin off. I swish them around anyway, but if you didn't have that, you could essentially just do this for five minutes. Afterwards, you've got a no uncured resin on the outside of your print set. Now you can see the detail on there is fantastic, but it still needs to cure for a final step. I leave mine out in the sun for a few hours. If you have a UV resin chamber, you can do that as well by shining a bunch of UV light at it. Now the detail you get on this is just crazy pants good. There's no way you can get an FDM printer for the same price that can do this level of detail. For 260 bucks, it's hard enough to find an FDM printer, let alone one that does this level of detail. So obviously I learned a lot of this stuff from the craftsman. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. He made this little free range chicken and it is freaking adorable. I supported him by throwing him some money and got some STL files of this bad boy. And it was perfect because it turns out to be an amazing way to show the level of detail that this can get. You can see the build line between the little chicken's eyes there and the little feather on the back or the gobbledygook on the top. Its build lines are thinner than the lines on my finger. It's just redonkulously good. After you spray this up with some primer, you essentially wouldn't notice them at all. The only reason I got that bulb on the back there is because there was some uncured resin in the little hole that I didn't realize when I cured it out in the sun. I'm an amateur, I'll get better at it as I go. I had a ton of extra resin left in the reservoir, so I also wanted to print out one of the STL files for the Hero Forge miniatures that they put up on their website for free to test out printing minis. And it is so so good man i just i, I love it. it it's yellow but it, it really doesn't have many problems i had some supports on here you can see tiny little bulbs i have essentially done no cleanup comparing it to this games workshop model from warhammer it just looks darn good and i'm going to compare it here to one of these professionally printed ones from hero forge for a character that i made a long time ago they really are quite comparable the neckline on the hero forge one has some build lines but nothing on the back my mini here has some build lines but honestly they're very very hard to see the cape struggles just a little bit but i mean even the cape on the hero forge minis sometimes struggle and they have a nice printer for their stuff so for the bang for your buck 260 bucks for this printer it is a great intro to resin 3d printing honestly i would prefer it over an fdm unless you're going for large build size the only downside to this is the build plate size because you can't make things that are that big but for all you dice goblins who might want to be making your own dice content out there this is a great starter set for you I'll go over the software and how to use it in a future video because I want to show you a little bit more in depth how I'm going to go about creating some 3D models and some 3D dice for making my own customs in the future. So let's learn together in a future video. This one we'll just leave to Elegoo for a review. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you're excited about what this might mean for what we're able to create on the channel and I hope that you subscribe if you are excited about that. Maybe check out some of my other content if you want to learn how to make your own dice from scratch sans a 3D printer and maybe we'll learn how to do it with a 3d printer in the future i hope that you enjoyed and i hope that you have a fantastic day